Hey everyone, it's Paige and welcome back to my YouTube channel today. So we are at Lake Geneva and I'm playing the Palmer course. We are going to take you through 16, 17, and 18, which are some beautiful golf holes. So let's see if I can play them under par. Let's go. So we're on hole 16, which is a beautiful par three. We have the water all in the background. It is 165 into the wind, but playing downhill. So I am in between a six and a seven iron and six and a five. And I'll see you through it, six and a seven. Um, so it is a little downhill. So I think it's actually gonna play close to the number. So 165. I might go with a seven just cause I'm hitting a little bit farther. Something I really like try to work through for course management is to check the wind, look if it's uphill, downhill level, and then see where everything's going. And then I pick a club. So I like to really think through everything before I select a club. I usually bring two with me to the tee box just to see how I feel when I get up there. So let's get up there. <laughs> So now that I'm up here, I'm really thinking that it's, I was gonna say a seven, but the wind is picking up and the trees are moving a lot. So we're still gonna go with the seven. I'm just gonna hit a little bit harder and uh, see what happens. The greens are firm here. So when I say the number is 165, I'm not actually looking at that carry number because the greens are so firm. You're actually looking at the front edge number because it's going to roll out so much more. So depending if the greens are soft or more firm, that's also going to depend on the club that you use. And you're not actually looking at the carry number to the pin. You're looking at the front of the green number, which you can shoot with your shot scope range finder um, to find where it is, or you can check on your watch. Um, but that's actually the number that you're looking at here. So I think that's why I'm gonna go with the seven. I'm glad I picked the seven. I executed that perfectly. It hit just over the bunker, um, a little bit short, and then rolled out. And it looks like I have around 20 or so feet, which I will take for this hole. But again, you really have to think through every single shot and how the course is playing. And that's gonna indicate the club that you hit and the shot that you wanna hit. Start it up. a beautiful backdrop to this hole and to this golf course really. I have been so impressed with all of the golf courses here. So they have the Trevino, the Player, and the Palmer and they have all been truly incredible. I have never really done Wisconsin golf before so I didn't know what to expect but they have some of the but like seriously world-class golf courses and uh, Geneva National is one of the best and they have the dance floor which is this really cool um, putting green they have 18 holes it's like real super slopey so much fun and great for everyone so if you're in the area come check it out <laughs> so with this putt i'm really just trying to see how everything is sloping i was told that on this golf course everything slopes towards lake como so i know already since the lake is there that it's going to break that way coming around i kind of feel that a little too firm so it didn't break uh but still it's a, it's okay i'm gonna tap in for well hopefully i can tap for my part first before i say that okay tapped in for my par and one key thing that huge advice is 
always go to the pro shop and ask them where everything breaks towards because that's going to help you throughout your round. Sometimes it's lake, sometimes it's mountain, sometimes it's grain, but they'll give you some insights to the course. So while you're checking in, ask them how, how, how are the greens and how it's breaking and they'll usually give you some really good tips. I mean, I, I don't know if I'd rather be here playing golf on this amazing golf course or doing that. <laughs> Maybe I'll have to do another video, come back here and do that. But um, okay, back to the golf. <laughs> I'm sure you guys would rather also see me doing that on YouTube. But anyways, I digress. Back to the golf. So it is a par five, 485. It's all legs. It looks a little bit to the left. And so I'm gonna try to hit a nice little tight draw here. The wind is little bit into me and uh, we're just gonna swing away. It looks like a pretty wide fairway and with my natural draw it should sit up real nice. I've mentioned this before but for course management always tee up on the side that uh, will open the hole for you so I hit a nice draw. I like to come on the left side of the tee box. It really opens up the course on the right side for me so I have more room to work with. If you like to hit a fade go on the right side. Again it opens up the left side and you can really work your fade that way. So being really smart on where you tee it up is going to be huge to your placement and giving you a little bit more room. It just looks a little bit better uh, visually off the tee for you. yardage but I actually really enjoy that one and I'm not as good from like a hundred so find the yards that you feel comfortable with and most confident and lay up to that yardage so I'm going to take my three wood aim at the bunker that's just straight ahead of me and uh, give it a good rep hit a good shot in and this hole is really cool because it's actually a replica of 18 on Pebble Beach so um, you can see the similarities here and how it has the water on the left side and how a dog legs left so it's a really interesting and cool hole. So I feel like I set myself up for this all the time because guess what number I have in? I have 100 yards in. I just said <laughs> I don't like that number. Um, so I'm going to test myself and uh, see how well I hit this shot again. Sometimes when you're hitting a full shot lofted, it's hard to control the spin. So controlling it with um, where I'm putting in my stance and flighting it really just helps me hit it straight, <laughs> especially under pressure with my wedge shots. So 
Um, that's what I'm going to try to do on this one. So one thing that's really interesting about the Palmer course out here is that the greens are very complex and a lot of them, um, there's a lot of slopes and you have to be in the right spot of the green. And so on this hole, the green actually tips this way towards the water. So you really want to make sure that you're landing it short because if you land it at the pin, it's probably going to roll all the way past the green. So when I say 100 again, we talked about this before, 100 to the pin is not the actual yardage that you're looking at. You want to land this about 90 just front edge of the green and let the green do what it's meant to do. And so you really need to play the course as it is designed to be played. And I think a lot of people don't realize that. And so they try to force different shots or hit certain shots, but you really just have to play with what the course gives you. And so for a shot like this, you're like, I want to hit a wedge shot. I'm going to spin it. I want to land it close to the green or close to the pin. And that's not really the shot that is meant to be played. You want to land it short, let it roll out. And again, just trust that the green is going to do what it's supposed to do. I just told you guys not to hit. <laughs> I flighted it well, um, maybe a little bit too well because it shot through the wind, landed right at the pin, pin high, and rolled off the green. So <laughs> I hit a great shot, but I didn't listen to the advice that I gave you guys, and that was to land it short and let the green take it. And I hit it at the pin, and I let the green um, take it past the pin into the rough. <laughs> now I obviously uh, hit it over the green and this is where you need to learn from your previous shot doesn't matter if it's a drive approach shot um, putt a chip whatever it may be I now know that this is going to be uphill because everything was sloping downhill when I hit my approach shot in so it's gonna be a little bit slower I'm gonna have to fly it a little bit farther and I just now know that because of the previous shot straightforward chip shot lie is good um, greens are really pure and there's really nothing funky that really comes into play just here the green complex is a bit um, complicated so you want to walk up find the spot that you want to land it or I always think of like a hula hoop of where you want to land it and I really think it's important for everyone to walk up to the pin, read a chip shot as if you're reading a putt because a lot of people will get down to their ball and not realize that it's breaking a certain way or that it's uphill or downhill. But if you walk it off and you can do that on your way to the golf ball, it really gives you a lot of information that is important to hitting a really great shot. A lot of people will hit a great chip shot, have the right distance, but because they misread the break of it ends up rolling five, six, seven feet and they're disappointed with their shot and it actually wasn't a bad shot. You just didn't take the time to read it. So I know that everything's gonna break towards the lake so it's gonna move this way. I'm gonna play it a couple feet on the left side and just hit a basic chip shot. So as you can see the ball is breaking and I played it exactly where I wanted to. I played a couple feet of break there and if I played it at the pin it would have been four or five feet on um, the right side because of all of that break. So again really important to uh, make sure you're reading every green, um, all of your chip shots, even you know looking at the green complexes before you hit your approach shots is also really important if you're playing competitive golf. So that is a par and uh, we'll go to the last hole where I need to make birdie. <laughs> so this is a par four, it's hole 18. It says 357 on the card, but on the cart, um, these carts are also like so incredibly nice and comfortable. <laughs> we have 396, so it looks like a little bit farther, probably because the pin is back. Um, looks like a straightaway. Again, just going to uh, grip it and rip it. Let's see what the wind is doing little bit left to right so that's gonna i have a natural draw with the wind going um left to right it's actually gonna probably even that out so it'll be more of a straight um drive so i just have to keep that in mind to not 
play too far up on the right side because if it does push it a little bit, I'll probably be in that bunker. Uh, so just want to avoid that. I did push it a little bit to the right. Luckily, I flew the bunker that I was a bit worried about. And uh, I think we're gonna be in the fairway and have a good opportunity to hopefully make that birdie and finish these three holes under par. It looks like 165 um, into the pin. So as you can see right here, we have the clubhouse in the background but you can see the putting green right there. That's the dance floor that I was talking about earlier in the hat. And as you can see, it is the entire length basically of the clubhouse, which is really cool. And it's something that you can do obviously all throughout the day, but also at night. They wanna make it into this almost like club atmosphere, uh, hence the dance floor. And they're going to have this like cantina and they wanna have bottle service. They really wanna make it this super fun environment. and. That's something I really love about this course and the staff and everyone here is that they're really progressive and they want to make this a very welcoming and friendly environment for everyone. And as you guys know, that's just where I feel most comfortable and I felt so comfortable here the entire time. And so it's a great place to bring your family to have a good time and you don't have to know how to play golf to go to the dance floor. You can just go and putt, knock it around. But they also have a really interesting green complex and so if you are a more experienced golfer it's still going to challenge you and keep you interested and focused in on what you're doing and that's what i really like about it so you can bring your family out there and you can knock it around but i'm going to go out there and i'm actually going to practice because it focuses on your speed control and reading the greens and you get better by playing the dance floor too and that's what i really love uh, one about this entire course but especially the dance floor is that it's for every Every single level it's for anyone and everyone feels welcomed and invited to have an amazing time and uh, it's a great backdrop too for the shot that I'm hopefully gonna stick it close and uh, make my birdie so I have about 164 into the screen it is uphill a little into the wind I'm going to hit my six iron now we're looking for that front yardage especially if I have a less lofted club when it hits the green it's going to roll out more so I'm really looking for that front yardage and so all I want to do is try to carry it just over that bunker and let it roll to the pin. I'm gonna have to chip in. <laughs> I'm gonna hit a bunker shot, but I'm going to sign off here because they have the music bumping up by the dance floor. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to leave a comment down below if you've been to Geneva National before, or if you wanna come here, like this video, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys next Thursday and enjoy uh, the rest of this hole. Hopefully it's in one shot, but it'll probably be two and I get my up and down.